This is the story of Washington's wetlands. What are wetlands? Just as the word implies, they're land areas covered by water some or all of the time. Also known as marshes, swamps, or bogs, wetlands are a transition between land and water. Once considered useless wastelands, they are now valued for their important role in the ecology of natural systems, which are essential to human life. Saltwater wetlands are influenced by the tides. The types of wetland and the kinds of vegetation that grow there are determined primarily by tide levels. Freshwater wetlands are found along the edge of lakes, streams, and rivers, or as an isolated marsh or bog where a low area is filled by rain or groundwater. A great variety of wetlands are found in Washington State. Along the rocky stretches of the Pacific coast are many tide pools. These pools are filled by daily tides and host a variety of animal life, including starfish and sea anemones. Estuaries, such as Willapa Bay, contain a mix of ocean salt water and fresh water carried in by rivers and streams. Along their shorelines are many salt marshes and tide flats. Grays Harbor and Willapa Bay are two major estuaries on the Pacific coast. Puget Sound is the largest estuary in the state. It contains many smaller river mouth estuaries such as the Nisqually Delta. Here again we find extensive salt marshes and tide flats. In the Olympic and Cascade Mountains, we find freshwater wetlands, usually associated with streams and lakes. Much of western Washington is covered by evergreen trees. Wetlands are common here, though they may be well hidden. They are found along lakes and rivers. Also sloughs, bogs, and marshes are common in western Washington. The east side of the Cascade Mountains offers a startling contrast to the forested west side. The Cascades force moisture-laden clouds to drop their precipitation before crossing. Therefore, the climate east of the Cascades is drier. However, a variety of wetlands can be found in eastern Washington. As you would expect, many of these wetlands are found along the edge of rivers and lakes. Others, such as the potholes, are unique. The potholes were scoured out over 18,000 years ago by an Ice Age flood. They were then filled by groundwater seeping in from below. They now provide important habitat for waterfowl. Vernal pools are formed when rainwater fills a shallow depression. These pools often dry up by late summer. All of Washington's wetlands perform important ecological functions. Many of these functions are also of great economic benefit to society. One of the most important functions is as a feeding, nesting, breeding, and hiding place for fish and wildlife. The abundant water and lush and diverse vegetation make wetlands among the richest wildlife habitats in the world. Waterfowl are particularly dependent on wetlands. Species such as Canada geese, pintail, and trumpeter swans feed and nest in wetlands. Shorebirds, such as dowagers, feed in the shallow water and on mudflats and build their nests on shore. Large birds like the great blue heron feed in wetland areas and nest nearby. Other birds, such as osprey and marsh wrens, are closely tied to wetland habitat and build their homes there. Wetlands are home to mammals, such as muskrats, mink, and beaver, deer, 
and raccoons use wetlands as a food source. Wetlands are home to many reptiles and amphibians like turtles and frogs. Wetlands also play a critical role in the life of fish and shellfish. Many fresh and saltwater fish are dependent on wetlands at some stage of their life cycle. Coastal wetlands serve as nursery grounds for many species of marine fish and shellfish. Juvenile fish hide in coastal marshes to avoid predators. Wetlands are also important sources of nutrients for fish and shellfish and thus play an important role in the food web. This diagram shows a simplified view of the food web. The driving force of the food web is the energy provided by the sun. Plants transform the sun's energy into food. Although some wetland plants are eaten directly by animals, most of the plants die and decay. This decayed material is then consumed by microorganisms, insects, crabs, and shellfish, which are in turn eaten by fish and birds. This complex chain of predation makes up the food web. Wetlands' role in the food web is of tremendous economic value to commercial fisheries. Wetlands are also important to endangered species, such as the bald eagle. Over one-third of the nation's endangered animals are dependent on wetlands. Many threatened and endangered plant species are found there, too. Wetlands provide a variety of recreational opportunities, such as fishing, hunting, boating, hiking, and observing wildlife. Wetlands are important to education and research. Because ecological relationships are so easily observed in wetlands, they are excellent locations for hands-on environmental education. Research in botany, ornithology, and ecology is frequently conducted in wetlands. The diversity of plants and animals and the interactions between land and water present unique opportunities for research. Wetlands play an important role in slowing and storing floodwaters. Riverine wetlands and floodplains provide flat expanses where floodwaters spread out and slow down, thus reducing the height and flow rate of floods. This diagram shows that rivers with wetlands left intact have much lower flood peaks. This means less flood damage and lower costs. Wetlands, such as these along the Washington coast, also provide a buffer against storms. They protect upland areas by absorbing wave and wind energy. Fast-moving water carries sediments in suspension. As water enters a wetland, it slows down and the sediments settle out. Wetland plants bind it with their roots and hold it in place. The vegetation also absorbs organic matter and chemicals. This improves water quality by filtering out sediments, excess nutrients, and toxic materials. In some areas of Washington, wetlands help replenish groundwater. Important crops are grown in wetlands, including wild rice, blueberries, and cranberries. Many wetland plants have high nutritional value and are used for grazing and hay. Research indicates that the cattail holds enormous potential as a source of protein. The use of wetlands is often a source of controversy between those who want to convert these areas to other uses and those who want them left in their natural state. For many years, wetlands were regarded as wastelands. It is estimated that since colonial times, over half of the wetlands in the continental United States have been eliminated. While we do not have exact figures on the total wetland losses in Washington, we do know that many wetland areas have been lost since the 1800s. 
In Washington, wetland losses have occurred from a variety of uses. Draining and diking for agriculture have taken a heavy toll. Dredging and filling for industrial and transportation use have eliminated wetlands in Grays Harbor, Willapa Bay, and Puget Sound. Hydropower dams have flooded many acres of river wetlands, particularly along the Columbia River. Poor logging practices have also taken their toll by increasing sedimentation and changing hydrologic patterns. Commercial and residential development have eliminated wetlands in all areas of the state and pose one of the greatest threats to existing wetlands. Wetlands have also been used as dumping grounds and polluted by runoff from nearby developments. Many federal, state, and local laws regulate the use of wetlands. Most of these were developed in the past two decades, but none of them provides comprehensive protection of the state's wetlands. Some wetlands in Washington have been protected through purchase by governmental agencies and private organizations. Nisqually National Wildlife Refuge, preserved by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, contains both fresh and saltwater wetlands. Padilla Bay National Estuarine Sanctuary near Anacortes is managed by the Washington Department of Ecology. The sanctuary sponsors wetlands research and provides environmental education programs and displays. In addition, private organizations, such as the Nature Conservancy, have purchased many wetland areas and maintain them in their natural state. You can help by working with local governments and supporting their efforts to protect local wetlands. Contribute to private organizations concerned with wetland protection and volunteer to work with conservation groups. And finally, teach others about the value of wetlands. We've learned that Washington contains a variety of wetlands that serve important ecological functions and provide great economic and aesthetic benefits to all of us. Unfortunately, our remaining wetlands continue to be destroyed at an alarming rate. It is up to you to preserve these threatened resources for future generations.